All right. So today, I want to talk about voltage, current, and resistance. So who knows what any of those things are? Who's got one? Yeah? Um, so voltage, well, I should start current. Current is like the amount of electricity that's going through. OK, so the amount of electricity going through. Who's got another one? Yeah? Voltage is a potential difference between the two right. sides. OK, so good. Like, potential difference. Who's got, who's got the third? Yeah. Um, resistance is like, I could use a water analogy. If you have water going through a pipe, uh -huh. then um, you know, if the pipe has a, a smaller opening, then uh, less water will be able to go through. Right. So um, resistance is like how much the current is being, is being blocked. Right. OK, good. So resistance is how much the current is being blocked. OK, so V, I, and R. These are like the fundamental building blocks for all the electrons, all the electrical engineering, um, tons of physics. It's a major part of how the world works, or at least how the electronics world works. So if we have V, I, and R, what's going on? What's moving in that system? Yeah. Electrons. Electrons. Who knows about the atom? Raise your hand. Good. So the atom is a proton, a neutron, and an electron, right? Or a mix of all of those things. So if you have proton, neutrons, and electrons, electrons are hanging out in the ring, right? And depending on the material, the electrons can move. They can go from one to the other, and they can move. And that's what electricity is. It's the movement of electrons. The whole electrical engineering field is all about how can I control electron movement. So I want these electrons to stay here. I want these electrons to go over here. I want to do this all very quickly. Um, that's electrical engineering in its most basic form. So electrons are everywhere, right? Everybody agrees that? This table has electrons in it. This screen has electrons in it. We're all on side with that? Yeah? So everything is made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons. And electrons are everywhere. So what we have to do is motivate the electrons to move, right? So when electrons move, like he said, that's current flow. So as electrons move, you can measure how many electrons move, and you can measure the current that's flowing. All right, so then what would be voltage? Well, voltage is the amount of motivation that you provide to the electrons to get them to go places. Right? You provide a little bit of motivation, a few electrons will get up and move. You provide a lot of motivation, a lot of electrons will get up and move. Yeah, question? What is that motivation? What is that motivation? That's great. Uh, that's voltage. So the voltage is the, is the unit. Mm -hmm. um, I think what you might be asking is what is a source of voltage? Yes. Um, so a source of voltage is a battery. Okay. That's a great example. So. Um, a battery has chemicals inside it that generate a voltage. And so that's a chemical to electrical energy conversion, and that's how a battery works. And then there's other ways where you can make voltage with um, spinning a magnet around a coil of metal, and we'll talk about that later, and that would be a generator. Okay. Yeah? Okay, so does that mean if the more voltage you have, the faster the current is? or if it, The more current there is, so the more, more current, current flow. Does it have anything to do with electrons going faster? Or no? Uh, not really. Electrons, you can assume, go at the speed of light. Um, that's not really true. Um, the number of speeds that they go through, but um, really, you want to think of it as how many electrons are moving, not how fast a specific number of electrons are moving. So, voltage, the more voltage you have, the more electrons you have, or the more current you have? The more electrons you get to move. Right? So let me give you guys my favorite analogy. And doing voltage, current, and resistance lectures are always about analogies. So you'll hear, when you go to physics class or college or whatever, you'll hear an analogy to talk about voltage, current, and resistance. So my favorite analogy is you guys. You're all sitting here, and you're all electrons, right? So, okay, you're happy, doing your thing, sitting there, being in your idle state. If I was to leave you alone, you would... Just sit and hang out. Good. So I, as the electrical engineer, want you guys to go out that door, down the hall, in the other door, and back through this door. So do a lap, right? If I said, I'm going to pay people 
10 cents a lap. Who's going to get up and go? <laughs> Nobody. All right, so I got one guy. He's going to get up and go. Awesome. Good for you. Get your exercise. So he's going to get up and he's going to do a lap or he's going to do 10. He's going to just sit there and do laps and make money. 10 cents a lap, by the way, for something that takes five seconds is a pretty good deal. So, all right, so I got one guy. What if I was offering a dollar a lap? Who's going to go? More, but not all. I'll do it. More. So, all right, so we got the market going. 50 cents. We'll <laughs> so, more, but not all, right? So, I could sit here and if I say, all right, 10 cents a lap, I got one guy doing laps. And I can measure, right? I can measure how many people walk through that door per second. And that would be like current. The amount of money that I'm providing would be voltage. Who would go for $1,000 a lap? Right? I'm sure everybody in this room would get up and start cranking out some laps at a grand a lap. And then I'd have to sit there and I'd have to measure how much current is flowing, and it would be a lot. So the amount of motivation that I provide with dollars is the same as the amount of motivation I provide with batteries. More dollars, more batteries, more voltage, it's all the same thing. The number of you, the electrons, that get up and move represents how much current is there. I can stand at this door and I can measure how many electrons flow per second, and that's current. Right? Yeah? So is it then only possible to have a certain amount of current and a certain amount of voltage? So what I mean by that is, like, let's say you have five volts, uh -huh. then you could only have, like, uh, I don't know, like 300 milliamps of current. It's just arbitrary number ever at 5 volts, or could you have more than that at 5 volts? So you're getting ahead of me, um, and what you're getting at is what controls how much current flows. So what, what helps you guys decide, like if I say I want you guys to do laps, right, and I'm going to pay you to do it, so far I've told you how much money I'm going to give you, what else do you need to know in order to decide if you're going to do it? When so, I haven't said yet what the lap consists of, right? So, if I say I'm going to pay you a dollar per lap, would you agree to it without knowing how far you have to go? No. No. So, if I said, all right, I want you to do this little lap here on this floor, it's not a big deal, right? You guys will do it for a dollar a lap, we've already found. Okay, what if I said I want you to go out this door, go downstairs, run to the Hudson, come back, and come back in that door and come back here. That's the lap. Who's going to do it for a dollar a lap? Nobody, right? Who's going to do it for a million dollars a lap? Lots of people. And so that's what you're getting, that's what your question gets to, is how do the electrons decide if they're going to flow? Like, if I give a dollar per lap, they also want to know what the lap consists of. And that's resistance. Is how much work am I going to make you do when you decide to get up and go. So the electrons are like, you guys are like, well, a buck, I'll walk around the floor, but for a dollar, I don't think I'm going to leave the building. Um, for a thousand, I will. Similar to electrons. Electrons are like, well, you want me to go through that resistor and that LED, but that's kind of far. You're only giving me a volt. Nah, you keep it. But if I was to give them 10 volts, they'd be cranking through that thing like mad, right? And so that's what decides how much current flows, is how much voltage I provide and what the task is in front of them to get the job done. So there's a relationship. But before I go into that, do you have questions? No. Okay. So there's a relationship that will give you the exact answer you're looking for. And that relationship really sums up all of electrical engineering. Not all of it, but most of electrical engineering. So everybody pay attention. This is like a big deal. Everybody in this room is going to use this equation. It's a very complicated equation. Ready? V equals IR. Who knows what that means? Yeah? Voltage equals current times resistance. Awesome. Who knows what it's named? Um, Ohm's Law. Ohm's Law. Brilliant. You guys know this stuff. I don't even know I'm talking to you. So you've got voltage, you've got current, and you've got resistance. And this gets back to your question. How do you know how much current will you have given any voltage and resistance? And you use this equation to figure that out. Let's use a simple example. So earlier I talked about a battery. So we have a battery here, right? 
So I could say it's a double A. And we've got, I said I was going to send it through a resistor and a diode. This is an LED, so it'll light up. We like it lighting up. All right. So we got 1.5 volts. Actually, I'm not even going to do the, diode, the LED. We're just going to do the resistor. Just the resistor. Simplest thing. Right? Okay, and then I'm going to make this 1500 ohms. Follow me? So we got 1.5 volts, 1500 ohms. How much current do we have? Yeah. Point. Wait. Point oh one. Point what? Point oh oh one. Yeah, point oh oh one. So we go. What do we do? We do 1.5 volts equals x amps times 1500 ohms. Right? That's the equation. And so if we solve it, x equals 0.001. Do we agree? I don't like to do math on the board because I get it wrong every time. So we'll assume we agree. Okay, so 0 0.001 amps. Good. Otherwise known as one milliamp. You guys following me there? Yeah. yeah. Why'd you change from um, just I to amps? Like, could there be another so, thing? Could there be like a something else instead of amps? Or amps is for this equation only amps would work. So amps is the unit of current. Um, I is the symbol for current. So, um, and this is just, I mean, you can make this a picture of an elephant, I don't care. Uh, it's really what it, what it represents that matters. So, um, D equals IR, D equals elephant times R, I don't care. Um, I is just, in the electrical engineering field, I is current. Yeah? What are watts a unit of? Watts are a unit of power. We can talk about that in a minute. Um, so, we got current flowing here, and now this begs the question, does current flow through everything? So if I hook up a battery to anything, let me get your battery. So I'm going to take this battery, right, and I'm going to hook it up to myself. Boom. Is current flowing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We got a no, we got a yes. Who thinks no? We got three, four, think no, five, think no. Who thinks yes? Who's hedging their bets and they don't want to say anything until I give them the answer? Yeah, the safety folks. Okay, so the answer is yes, current is flowing. But why, if current's flowing, if I'm being electrocuted right now, why do I not care? Yeah? Because you're not conducting that much. I'm not conducting that much. And this is where the beauty of this equation comes in is that much. Is anything a perfect insulator? No. So this resistance is never infinity. And since this is never infinity, and current can never be zero as long as voltage is not zero. Follow me? So then why don't I care? How do I make it go? You have to put a pen down. It just takes ten pages. Or I have to put the pen down. Yeah, and then I think there should be, you go down, scroll down. Yeah, scroll down. Yeah, you scroll down like this. Uh, no, on the left. Uh, this guy? Yeah. And there should be extent page on the bottom. And then towards the middle. Ah, here we go. Look at these smart boards. What a thing. Okay, so let's let's do the example. <laughs> Come on. It's <laughs> pretty. Alright, so let's do the example I just gave. Here I am. Happy as can be. And I come across a battery. It's 1.5 volts. Right? With me? And I say, alright, I'm going to touch the end of here. I'm going to touch the end of here. Right? So, let's do the equation. If I told you I, as Dave, am... Ooh. 
Find 1,500,000 ohms, 1.5 mega ohms, as it's called. Find 1.5 mega ohms, how much current are we talking about? O, 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 1. So V equals IR, and Michael's saying I equals O point, how many O's? I think like five. Yeah, five. 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 It's only orders of magnitude, no big deal. Five O's. O, O, O. Oh, oh, uh, one. one. Yes. Otherwise known as one microamp. Yeah. One microamp. Good? Okay, this is a mu, not poor handwriting M or poor handwriting N. Mu being the Greek symbol mu. Anyways, one microamp. Um, good. So there is current flowing through me. But I don't care because one microamp doesn't hurt me. Okay, so let's say I come across. Let's say I come across. You know this guy? What's that? No. Wall outlet, right? What if we come across Mr. Wall Outlet and I decide to stick a couple keys in here? Oh, <laughs> what do you think is going to happen? Right, but I was electrocuted with the battery. I thought we said that didn't matter. You'll have a bad day. You'll have a lot. I'm not happy. Yeah. Um, the wall outlet supplies 120 volts. So. Wall outlet supplies 120 volts. So before it was 1.5 volts, right? Now 120 volts. Good. 120V equals I times 1.5 mega ohm. You guys follow mega ohm is the same as this? Right? So 120 current time equals current times 1.5 mega ohms. How many is that? And I'm definitely not doing this math up here. Somebody's going to have to tell me. Nobody? I get it. That's 12. Yeah. 0.00008. Four zeros. Zero point. And then four or three? Four zeros. After the decimal. Yeah. I'm trusting you here. It's on the board. Okay. So 0 0.00008. We've got one person saying. I'll take I'll take your word for it. So that's what is that? How many microamps is that? This was one microamp. How many is this? Eighty. Eighty. Eighty microamps. So one microamp. Don't care at all. 80 microamps, that ruins my week, yeah. Can you spell micro? Micro, like micro machines, or... Um, micro? Yeah. 